Folks, this is Matt Noakes. I'm a 10-year Major League veteran, Silver Slugger Award winner, and All-Star catcher. And I want to encourage you toward the end of your season here. You may be wrapping up and getting ready for, for the playoffs. You may be ending your season getting ready to go to summer ball or in high school getting ready to showcase, whatever it is. Um, whether you're hitting well or whether you're struggling, I want to give you some words of encouragement. It's just, you know, th this isn't going to be very long. It'll be nice, not, you know, nice and short um, just to get to the point. Um, I want you to know that as a Major League Baseball player, um, I made some transitions in my life because there were men who were Hall of Famers who came into my life and had a great effect in my life, transformed my life as a hitter because I, under, I began to see the big picture. I began to trust my natural abilities. And when I began to trust my natural abilities and how my body naturally moved and how I learned my timing, I trusted my timing, then I learned how to hit, I learned how to zone, I learned how to do a whole bunch of things that I didn't think I had the ability at one point. And so I want to just kind of relate to you here, you here for just a minute, and then I'm going to show something to you. First, we've all been there with uncertainty, and I know that you may be in, in, a, in a place right now where you feel uncertain. And uh, um, maybe you're just trying to hang on to your batting average, or, or maybe you're in a hole um, I've had players that have been in a hole. This is one player, uh, I won't mention names, but he, was, he had 300 at-bats with, uh, uh, he was hitting 195 with six weeks left with about, I don't know, six or eight home runs and 20-something RBIs. He ended up with 111 RBIs and 31 home runs and brought his average up to 270. I'm not talking about him or me or anybody else. I'm talking about the game of baseball. Anything can happen. You got player of the week four times and having another guy got player of the week twice on the same team because we apply these types of principles. So I want to give you some helpful hints with very easily. Uh, one, I've been there, okay? Um, first of all, I didn't know where I was when I was hitting. I just, I felt like in my setup, in my stance, I didn't know where I was coming from. I didn't know where I was, had to begin from. Number two, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I really wanted to make contact. I didn't know that feeling of, you know, I didn't really know the position of the bat or wherever it was. It just seemed like a long way to get to the ball. I, and I wasn't, really, I wasn't really comfortable with how I was going to get to the ball. It seemed like, you know, way too far. Number three is, I didn't know I, ha I had too much movement. I had a lot of extra movement. I had loops and I had, I had to do way too much. And I didn't realize that that wasn't the case. I didn't know all the variables with my timing. I didn't understand all the variables. I didn't understand that, that there were a lot of, of issues that are, that, that are facing us. So we're gonna go over this and, and, and I encourage you to ask questions go into the comments, and a lot of you are going to be um, watching this on a recording, and what I'm going to do is because these, these uh, short nuggets um, um, are going to be nice and short, uh, I'll be able to answer questions at the beginning of the next session. Sometimes if, there's a, if, if there'll be a lot of questions, maybe the whole session I'll, I'll devote to answering questions and then go on and and uh, do the message on, on another uh, Facebook Live. Um, but, you know, I didn't know all the variables and the timing, we'll go over that. And number five, therefore I missed a lot of pitches. I had pitches that I should have hit. I fouled the ball straight back, and you know that feeling when you foul the ball straight back and you think, oh, I just missed it. No, you didn't, you caught up to it. You might have caught up to it, but you didn't just miss it. And, and uh, you get to the big league level, and you foul a ball off and you think you, you did really good and, and you, you look in the dugout and, and, and you're thinking everyone's gonna go, oh, that was a great swing. No one's gonna be looking at you because you didn't hit it. I mean, you gotta hit the ball hard. So I wanted to, to kind of give you a, a little encouragement of what you can do, what can happen. Number one, there's five values MLB hitters master, they learn how to master these things, okay? I know where I am. I know where I'm going to start from. I know the place. It's comfortable. 
it's consistent, it's a ready to launch position, it, um, um, it's, it's, a, it's a place where I can feel readiness. It's not a place where I'm just comfortable being because I'm used to it, but I'm actually ready to attack, okay? Number two, I know where I'm going. I know where contact is. I know where I want the pitch to travel to. Um, let me tell you, you don't think that, that the great hitters, uh, shoot, I can think of in my day, Kevin Seitzer, he used to hit that, he was a right-handed hitter, he used to hit that 3-4 hole uh, more often than the human being could. Paul, Mol uh, Paul Molitor spraying the ball all over the place. Great hitters, Wade Boggs and Tony Gwynn and Don Mattingly, guys, guys uh, Alan Trammell, just guys that I played with, um, um, they knew different places where they could let the ball travel to and they had a, a specific place where they knew and they had a good idea of where it was coming to. Um, so they knew where they were going and they knew how they were going to get there. Number three, I don't waste motion. I direct my energy into the ball. I compress it. I don't just swing at it. I don't flail at it like I'm swinging at a pinata. I don't waste motion. Number four, I'm on time. Okay. And number five, I don't miss. And that's, those are the five values that a major leaguer has to, has to manifest. He has to manifest these things where he's, he's going up there saying, I know where I am. I know where I'm going. I don't waste motion. I'm on time and I don't miss. And you go up there and you have an intent, you hit with intention, you hit with certainty and, um, um, throughout these things, I want to give you answers. I want to answer your questions. And, and, and so I'm going to remove this for a second and, and show you a few things. All right. Um, you know, when we're talking about, I know where I am, it's being in your stance and, and being so comfortable with your stance that it's not, I remember when you first, first get to pro ball, one of the things that, that you do when you're, when you're a younger player is you think that what, what allowed you to get a hit is what you did last time. And maybe you did a big wind up and so you try to replicate that. When no, what we need to do is get into a place where we're as close to our launch position as possible. So we don't have to, we can eliminate the motion. We eliminate margin for error. Number two, we need to know where we're going. We need to know where contact is, and we need to simplify it in our mind. We need to be in our launch position, in our ready position, in our ride position, in our timing position, the, at the beginning of the timing phase, which we'll be going into it in other, in other sessions. But the ready position, it's not like you're going to begin in a place where you're relaxed, where you're not ready, and then you're going to have to do a whole lot. No, guys don't do that. They bring their bat, their, their, their first move is they have momentum in that bat. That bat has momentum with them. Even if they have a no stride, they have momentum. That bat's ready in a launch phase. They know where they're going. You know where you're going and you know how you're gonna get there, all right? Number three is you don't waste motion. You don't loop. So in other words, you know how to approach the ball. You know how to think about approaching the ball. You know the answers, okay? I didn't know the answers as a young player. I didn't understand that. But there are answers for natural hitting. And, you know, uh, there's an approach phase. And in the approach phase, you want to keep that barrel above your hands and so that you can drop the barrel when it's time. We'll go into that some other, in, in, in some other session. Um, the other thing is I'm always on time. I'm always on time because if the power of understanding where you're going just the simple act of rehearsing, rehearsing gives you a distance. When you take soft toss, you don't think you feel the distance between release and contact. You feel the distance. That's why you feel how long the ball's gonna take. And so just a simple act, what do we do when we play golf? Shoot, we put the ball down there and we place our, our, cl our club down there. Why do we do that? Why don't we just hold our club up here? because we want to know where we're coming back to, okay? Well, why don't we do that when we're hitting? We need to because we need to know 
where we want to let the ball travel to in the very act of that. Now, we're going to go into that and I'll give you more explanations in another session. And if you ask some questions, I'll give you those answers. But, but um, uh, the very act of rehearsing, learning how to rehearse, hitting is like learning a dance, a bunch of dance steps. And the dances flow together. Each of the steps in the dance flow together. Once you learn one thing and then learn the next thing, you have to learn it perfectly. You don't learn it sloppy, you learn it perfectly. And then it just kind of goes into a layer and you just go from layer to layer to layer. And pretty soon, it just becomes one thing. It doesn't become, you know, a hundred different things. The swing is just one thing. The swing is one, one movement, one very smooth, on time, very natural movement. And if the very act of rehearsal, of knowing where I'm going, deciding where I'm going to let the ball travel to, you know, shoot, if I want to hit that, that five, six hole as a left-hander, I know that I'm going to let the ball travel to some, somewhere in here, and I'm going to get comfortable with that. I'm going to work on that. You know, I'm not going to hit the ball way out front and try to guide it over there, okay? I'm going to understand how to let it travel to there, and it takes a certain amount of time for that to get there. All good hitters will tell you that. Now, the last thing is, is I never miss. Somebody asked me, uh, wh what did it take to get to the big leagues? What does a big league hitter look like? What does it look like to be a big league hitter? When did you know that you became a big league hitter? And I said, well, that's easy, when everybody knew. And they said, well, what, do you, what do you mean when everybody knew? Well, when my manager knew, when the coaches knew, when my teammates knew, shoot, when the other team knew. Fans knew, the umpires knew. When I got my pitch, I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. I got my pitch. I knew where I was going. I didn't waste motion. I was on time and I didn't miss. So you see, you guys, as you're going through the last part of your, maybe your regular season in high school and college and you're trying to hang on to your average, Keep it simple, take the pressure off yourself. Just get comfortable with where you're gonna start from, keep it simple. Then you definitely wanna know where you're going. If you know where you're going, then you can take the simplest route. You won't waste your motion. You wanna be on time and you don't wanna miss. Fouling the ball straight back is not, is not being on time. Foul, that's catching up, okay? So don't start feeling so good about catching up. You, you want to know that you can do it. If you want to be a great hitter, you have to manifest it. You have to believe it that you're going to do the things that I just said, right? Number one, that you're going to know where you're at. You know where you're going. You don't waste motion. You're always on time because you understand the variables of timing. And when you get your pitch, you don't miss it. And there's just something about hitting a baseball. And you guys all know what I'm talking about. And I wish you all the best. And I'm gonna hear, or you're gonna hear from me again tomorrow. I'm gonna do another short session. I'm gonna answer your questions at the beginning. And we can get, give you another little, little nugget. And, and good luck to you.